Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. God, we thank you. Lord, we are so rich today. We are so rich today in your presence, Lord. We are so rich today in your love. That God, it doesn't matter what we go through because we go through stuff. But just as it rains like it is today, the sun will shine again. It doesn't matter about the sunshine or the rain. It doesn't matter about the wind or the lack thereof. It doesn't matter about the hot or the cold. What matters is, is I am in love with you at all times because you are in love with me no matter what takes place. You love us. You care about us. You are faithful in season and out of season. You are right there walking beside us. We do not have to fear the sun by day nor the moon by night, the Bible says. But that, Lord God, the very mouth that breathed the stars in existence is the very one that speaks peace to my soul this day. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Come on, somebody say it with me. Lord, I love you. Not because you've done anything and you've done so much. Not because you've got to do anything and you've already promised to do so much. Lord, I love you just because you are worthy of my love. I am not worthy of the blood. I'm not worthy of a sacrifice. I'm not worthy of heaven. I'm not worthy of an inheritance. And I'm certainly not worthy to sit on the throne with Jesus Christ. But, Lord God, you are worthy of our knee to bow and our tongue to confess that you are Lord this day. Yesterday, today, and even forever. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. Worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not only worthy of our praise. Lord God, you're worthy of our problems. You're worthy to have our problems, God. Because what we sacrifice on an altar, Lord God, is not just the best of what I have. I sacrifice to you the worst of what I got. Because, Lord, you want it all. And, Lord Jesus, we give you this very day what we go through. Friend, I don't know what it is you're going through, but God does. It doesn't matter if I know or anybody else knows, God does. We need a touch in our body. We need restoration in our family. We grieve because we've lost loved ones. That, Father God, there are things that we go through that nobody, maybe not even our our, our spouse, our children, mom and dad, nobody knows. But God, you do. You do. God, what I declare right now is, Lord, have your way. I give you, Lord God, not only the best of my praise, but the worst of my life. I give you everything. Everything. Because, Lord, you're not, you don't just want the best. You're not content unless I give you everything, God. You are relentless in your hunger for me. You are relentless, Lord God, in your desire to be our God. And Father, I pray right now, have your way. Let your kingdom come and will be done in our life, in our church, in our community. Father God, I declare right now, for those that need a physical healing, be healed right now in Jesus' name. Just as you've been healing this week, keep healing in Jesus' name. Those that are struggling with things in their heart and their life, God, we speak over the mind right now. Be at peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Those that are not saved, that are so we're in love with, Lord God, they're in our lives, they're in our families, and they're not saved. God, we call their name out to you. And Lord, we declare right now, be saved in Jesus' name. Let the hound of the Holy Spirit be upon their trail. And God, I pray with as much love as I got in my heart, don't let them have any peace until they bow their knee and give their heart to you. I would rather they have no peace now and find you than to split hell wide open and have no hope whatsoever. Father God, I declare over marriages, be safe. Families, be safe. Homes, be safe. That, Lord God, you watch over us and you take care of us. Whatever it is we go through, Lord God, we lay it at your feet right now. We lay it at your feet right now. It's not ours. 
give it to you. We give it to you. There's no other place I'd rather be. Come on, Tanya, lead us in this. In your presence. Come on, just get lost in his presence this morning. That's the most important thing that could happen. That's church here today. Be in his presence. Thank you, God. prophetic word has been happening for thousands of years. The message in tongues and interpretation is something that has taken place since the days of the apostles, and they still continue. This very day, God speaks to us. What does his word say to us, friend? Trust me. That's biblical. That's straight out of the word of God. Trust me. I work in the dark places, in the secret place. I am working on your behalf to make things happen for you. That's a word for somebody here today. And friend, if that's you, you need to receive that. You need to let God move in your life with that. 
God knew you were going to be here and God stopped everything to speak to you. Can you thank him for that word? Can you respond right now saying, Lord Jesus, that's for me. That's for me and I need it. That's for me, Lord God, and I give you permission to do what it is that you got to do in me. Lord, that is a word for my life. And God, I give you the freedom to move in me. I trust you, Lord God. I trust you. Have your way, Lord. Have your way right here. Have your way right here in me. Have your way in my life. Have your way in every circumstance, even the things nobody else knows about, Lord. I let you to come in. I let you come in and do what it is that you want to do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for stopping our service today to speak to us. Thank you, God. You not only know where Poe in Arkansas is, you know each one of us by name. God, I don't take that for granted. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I feel like God's just stopping everything right now because there's some folks that have some things they need to cast, cast down. You need to just lay it down. You've been carrying a burden and it is not your burden. Before we do anything else, Lord's saying just to stop. And if you're here, would you come down and I want to pray with you this morning. You're carrying burdens that you don't know how to have the answer for. You don't know what to say. It's heavy on your heart. Friend, this is not an indictment of sin. This is saying you're not meant to carry it alone. Let us carry it with you. Are you here today? Come on, step out. Step out from where you're at and come and stand in this front place. Come and kneel at these altars if you want to. Come out right now. We're stopping everything. God wants to meet a need. He said in Matthew chapter 11, He said, Come, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Cast your cares upon me. Take my yoke upon yourself. See that my load is lighter. Come on, you're here today. Don't wait. Don't sit. Don't. This is the time to let God just bring some freedom. Bring some freedom. Come on. There is no shame. God save us if we ever get embarrassed to come to the altar. God forgive us if we ever decide we don't need to come and have some time with you. You see somebody down here praying, I want you to step out right now. I need some prayer partners to come. I need some folks that know how to pray. I want you to come. I want you to gather around. I want everybody to have somebody with them. It's time to pray. Come on, church. I said it's time to pray. You may not have a need, but I'll tell you, you can help fight a battle right now. Begin praying right now, church. Begin praying for these that are down here. Fight the good fight of faith on their behalf. One day you're going to have a load and you're not going to know how to carry it. And I promise you one of these will be praying for you. Pray with me right now, church. Pray. Lift these up. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus.
Lord, I thank you because you know just what we need at just the right time, just the right way. Thank you, God, because you got us. You hold us. If the Lord is for me, come on, someone. Who can be against me? I lifted my eyes up to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of creator, the creator of heaven and earth. My God. He's my God. He's your God. He's your Savior. He's your liberator. He's your freedom fighter. He's one who stands in your corner. The one who does not walk away from you. The one who keeps you close. The one who says, I will never leave you. Nor forsake you. Why so downcast, oh my soul, David said. Put your hope in God. These that are praying, I want them to just keep praying. Just keep praying. But I want to transition right now into the word because this leads right to where our word is. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter number 11. I ask you the question this morning, who struggles with faith? And the real answer to that is every one of us. Every one of us struggle with faith. This is not low man on the totem pole kind of stuff. This is every one of us. Pastors all the way across. We all struggle with faith. We all struggle with worry. We all struggle with fear. We all struggle with doubt. Who is the author of confusion? He's never God. Who is the author of doubt? Who is the author of fear? Who is the author of those things that keep us from having faith? That's Satan himself. The deceiver, the supplanter of God's word. Because it's by faith. The way that we hold on to God is by faith. It's not like we have an altar we can grab hold of, a statue we can go to. We serve a God we cannot see who does things that we could never do. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, starting in verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds are framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Faith is a tricky matter. We can have faith when it's all good. We can have faith when everything's all right. We can have faith when it's sunshine and roses and I ain't got a problem in the world. Sure, it's easy to have faith at that point. It requires no faith to have faith in good times. When you've got to have faith is the moment it's hard. It's hard to trust in things you can't see. Over what you do. I remember as a teenager walking up a driveway, middle of the night, my car, my truck had broke down, and I'm walking up a driveway, and as I'm walking up that driveway, uh, man, all of a sudden, I got three big old dogs barreling down on me. And there wasn't much to me, but I guess I looked like dinner to them. And they came running up on me, making an awfulest fuss, and I thought, oh, what do I do, what do I do? And then... In that moment, God said, start calling out on my name. And I said, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And I mean, I got no stick. I got nowhere to go. I sure can't outrun them. I got nothing except the name of Jesus. Can I tell you, as soon as those dogs got up to me, all three of them growling, snarling, got right behind me, started wagging their tails and didn't say another thing. God 
does that. Knocked on the door. Man comes to the door and looks at his dogs like, what's it good of having dogs if they don't attack strangers? Can I tell you, God, God overcomes. What we don't see is actually more real than what we do see. Because have you know, this will pass away one day. But God's kingdom does not. Faith can be tough. And no matter what others say, none of us are great at it. None of us have a college degree. None of us have just oodles and oodles of experience that we can just stand in faith. We are God's man of faith at all times. We struggle with doubt our entire journey. We struggle with fear our entire journey. And yet this very struggle is what God desires. Because he wants us to choose faith over just falling into his presence. We have to choose to be his. We have to choose. I will believe in God and not my circumstances. We have to choose to say, I would rather have God for me than anything else for me. Now, I know that I may I, what I see is tricky, but I know God's going to have my back. God wants you to trust him, to choose him, versus saying, eh, Nathan, come here. Andrea, come here. David, come here. It's so easy to call out on everything else and God saying, quit choosing everything else. Choose me. I allow you to go through these things, not because I'm mean, but because I want you to choose me. And if you choose me, you'll overcome this. It means we choose to follow God's lead over our own so that we can see God's purposes accomplished and not our own. David didn't run to the battlefield in his own strength. I love that story where everybody else was cowering, everybody else was afraid. Don't forget, it was that first son that the, that the prophet Samuel said, oh, surely this one's going to be the king. He was one of the ones hiding. But it was David who ran to his battlefield. It was David who ran to that battle line. It was David who chucked it on down to that giant because he said, I don't come on my own name, but I will kill you in the name of the Lord. The Lord will defeat you this day. David knew he could trust in the unseen God to do the concrete things of life. Hebrews 11, 5 and 6 says, By faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. How? In faith. There was something about Enoch's life that we miss because we're so far removed from it. I believe there are things that we have lost. There are things about Enoch's life that was so entrenched in faith. God was pleased with him, not because he got up every morning and walked with God, but that he had faith in God, faith to believe if I walk, God will walk with me. There was something that pleased God about Enoch, and it was this issue of faith. And it says right here, following this testimony, this was his testimony that he pleased God, but without faith it is impossible. Somebody say impossible. It's impossible to please God without faith. When we do things on our own, when we try to live without God's leading, without God's unction, without the Holy Spirit guiding us, we are not pleasing God. Oh, but I'm at church every weekend. So's the devil. That means nothing. But I give and I do, and that's all commendable. But am I giving and doing what God requires and God is wanting or what is convenient for me to give? I'm telling you, when God calls you to step out in faith, it ought to scare the liver out of you. We used to give away T-shirts in the West Texas district when the kids would go off to Speed the Light convention. And they, they, they would go to this conference and they said, we're going to raise money for Speed the Light. And we'd give them T-shirts that says, my goal to give in this blank line where they take a permanent marker and write it on there. And it said, my goal of scares me. We wanted them to catch that concept because fear is not a comfortable place to be until you learn faith. Faith is that place to where it doesn't matter what is out there. 
doesn't matter what I face, God will take care of me. Somebody tell me in any of God's track record where he ever failed. Where did God ever fail? And we'll look back at our lives and say, well, God didn't do this and God didn't do that. Maybe that's not what God wanted. That's what you wanted, but wasn't what God wanted. But I want to, let me throw a good old-fashioned monkey wrench in the thinking here. Because we're dealing with us having faith in God. But did you ever stop and think, how much faith does it require of God to trust us? Have you ever stopped to think, what does it cost God to trust us, to trust you, to do what's right? This was a contemplative moment. God had me up at 1.30 in the morning this week saying, all right, let me tell you what I want you to share. And God began taking me down this journey of faith because things I struggle with, things I say, God, but what about, but God, what about? And the Lord said, hey, <laughs> man, really? All these years later? Of course, I'm like everybody else, so hurry, God. You know. And the Lord said, and this is where the Lord challenged me. He said, son, let me tell you something. Faith is something we all operate in, even myself. Let me tell you, that took me back a step or two. God, you got to operate in faith? He said, sure, son. How many times am I asking you to step out there for me and you don't do it? How many times am I requiring you to do something and you don't do it? And if you don't do it, how many know there's a chain reaction? There's a chain reaction that takes place. If I'm faithful to do this, then God will do this. And if this happens, then this life is touched. And then if this life is touched, then it'll touch this one. If this one's faithful to do it. And it's just a domino effect that if we're just faithful to do our part and the next person is too, there's a domino effect of God's blessing that spans the world. But what happens if somebody doesn't do their part? And God says, I've got to trust that my people are going to do what I tell them. Think about this. God formed the world from nothing. The Bible tells us this. This is not a leap of faith for God. When God formed the world, he could, he could do it. He could make something out of nothing. That's God. And yet from before its very creation... God had a plan for this world and all of us who dwell in it. The Bible says in Revelations 13, 8, all who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the lamb, what? Slain from the foundation of the world. Where was Jesus Christ slain from? When this world was being made, he was in agreement with the Father. I will give up my life for those you create. Jesus Christ may have died at roughly 33 years of age, but can I tell you, he was already destined to die long before that. That as the world was being made, he was already in partnership with the Father that I'm going to do this very thing. God doesn't accomplish this plan on his own. Anything that takes place, God doesn't do it by himself God chooses to use his people to fulfill right actions at precise moments. The right thing at the right time is what? The right thing. And God is dependent on his people at the right time to be at the right place because he told them to, to do the right thing because they're being obedient to what he says. And the question that the Lord was Dealing with me, he said, son, think about this. I call on my people to be there at that moment to do what I tell them to do. And the question is, is will they? Will they? You see, because we are not robots. We do not form and function just because we're predestined to do a thing. We have to become obedient to God's will and say, yes, Lord, I will be your person and be there. I will be obedient to what it is that you would have me to do. Will they be there? Is there a person of faith there to accomplish it? And if they don't, is there someone else who will? And if the opportunity is missed, will God create a new one? Think about this. How many times when God wants to bless your life, when God wants to touch you, when God wants to minister to you, and he puts somebody in your path, think about somebody that came up to you and, and at the right moment just said, hey, I just felt like I needed to call you. Hey, I felt like I just needed to send you a note. 
You know what? You're on my heart today, and I just wanted to tell you this. I want to do something for you. Hey, here's a pecan pie, because I have you know pecan pie fixes everything. Hallelujah. Here's a pecan pie just because I feel like I need to do something for you. And it was that right word, that right action, that right phone call, that thing. And all of a sudden, man, what was hell in a handbasket all day, now all of a sudden turned into heaven. Where I was dragging before, all of a sudden, man, I'm wonderful now. I'm on top of it. Anybody been there? Come on. I'm glad one of us has. Hallelujah. I'll make you pecan pie. No, I won't. I'll buy you one. We come to those places. What would happen if that person hadn't been obedient to say, I'll be there, Lord. Yes, Lord, I'll call. Yes, Lord, I'll do it. Yes, Lord, I'll. What would have happened? Man, when I was a youth pastor, I remember watching guys, they get these, they get become youth pastors at great big old churches. Man, they're making a lot of money. Man, I had, God put me at these, the most small rinky-dink places. I, I didn't make no money. Because how you know it's a calling? It's not a career. It's a calling. And I remember I'd have the, this first, I didn't know what I was doing. God bless them. I just showed up. I was going to be their youth pastor. And I remember at Forest Hill Assembly of God, South Fort Worth, drive from Bible college, go there Wednesdays and Sundays and go hang. Great, great, great group of people. And I learned the value of the Pentecostal handshake. Have you ever had one of them? It's where you don't see the thumb. Come on, is anybody with me on that? You don't see the thumb. Why don't you see the thumb? Because it's holding something. And they come up to shake your hand and just, oh, praise God. I want to shake that hand. And they, get, they put a little something in. Man, I was a broke college student. Broke. Had nothing. And every now and then, they'd give me a little something because the church couldn't pay me. They'd give me a little something to pay for my gas or whatever. What would have happened? And sometimes that was right on time money that I needed bad. What would have happened if that dear old saint had said, well, I'm on a fixed income. So, God, I can't give it to you. Hey, I understand fixed incomes. But I also understand obedience. Because I know when we had nothing to give and we gave anyway, God returned what we gave. God blessed above and beyond anything that we gave. Man thwarts the will of God every day due to lack of faith and obedience. Man does. God has a desire. God has a thing he wants to accomplish. And man will get in the way and say, no. I've seen individuals, I've seen whole churches miss the will of God because they were not looking for what he wanted to do. Listen to me, church. That's not how God wants us to live. Is somebody hearing me? That's not how God wants you to be. That's not how God wants your life to be, that you miss him every time you turn around. Well, where is God? I don't hear him. I can't sense him. Listen to me, friend. If you're listening, you'll hear his voice. John chapter 10, my sheep know my voice. That if they hear a voice and it's not my voice, they'll know that's a thief and a robber. How are you going to know the difference between God and a thief and a robber? By the voice of God, you have to discern who the voice of the Lord is, how it sounds. You've got to know it is just as much a step of faith for God to trust us to do a work as it is for us to trust him to accomplish it. I want you to catch this statement. It is just as much a step of faith for God to trust us to do a work as it is for us to believe he will accomplish it. And I want you to go over... And I want you to pray over this person and speak healing over them. Oh, but God. Yeah, what if they don't? Well, you haven't wasted anything. Because we, we're, we're prone to think, well, if they don't rise up from the dead, if they don't rise up from their, from their uh, gurneys or wheelchairs, if they don't rise up, then that's my fault. No, no. I'll be faithful to do what God asked me to do. Whatever happens after that is up to God. Is somebody hearing that? That's not your problem. That's God's problem. But, Lord, I've been praying and I've been praying. Well, don't quit praying. Don't stop. Can I tell you, some of you are here today. You are saved because somebody prayed for you for years. What would happen if they had given up? What would happen if our grandmothers and our grandfathers, our parents, had quit giving up or had quit praying for us? They gave up all hope on us. Man, there'd be a lot of us that wouldn't be around. 
Because somebody was praying for us. They didn't stop. It takes a lot of faith to believe God's going to accomplish something. But can I tell you, it was never your place to worry about it. You see, as a servant, and that's what God calls us to be as servants. As a servant, God does not call me to make sure everything gets done. He calls me to be faithful to do my part. But Lord, what about this person? This person may not do their part. That's not your fault. That's not your problem. That's God's. Well, what about those down there? They're not doing their part, Lord. That's not your problem. That's God's. But what if I give this guy 50 bucks and he turns around and blows it on drugs? That's not your problem. But it is your disobedience if you don't do what God requires of you. The difference between us and God, where it costs God something to trust us. And you have to ask yourself this. Why would God trust me? Why would God trust me? I have no reason why God should trust Mike Sullivan. I'm just glad he does. I'm glad he never gave up hope on me. And he says, hey, what about this? What about this? The difference is that God knows the ultimate plan while we do not. And where one will not be faithful, there are others that will. There are others that will come in and let God move through them. There are others that are standing like, like a, a, a Second Corinthians, or excuse me, Second Chronicles says, the eye of the Lord roams to and fro over the entire world, looking for someone to show themselves strong on their behalf. He's looking for somebody that's going to stand over there and say, "Here I am, God. Here I am. Come find me. I'm over here in Grant County, Lord. I'm over here in Hot Springs County, Arkansas, Lord. God, I'm in Texas. I'm in Canada, God. I'm over here in Mexico, wherever I'm at, God. Here I am. Find me because." I want to be used. That's who God's looking for. And what happens if one right here won't do it? God says, I tried. Move them aside and put another in their place. What happened when Esther said, but if I go before the king, I could die. What did Mordecai say? Who's but knows you're here for such a time as this. And if you won't stand up and let God use you to deliver his people, he'll set you aside. You'll die, but he'll raise somebody else that will stand in the gap. Can I tell you, that's what God is looking for. He's looking for men and women. He's looking for young people, young men and women who are willing to stand in the gap and say, here am I, God. I'll stand in the gap. I don't care what it costs. I don't care how much fear there is. I don't care whatever comes against me. I will stand my ground. Though the gates of hell would try to prevail. When I cannot swing my sword, I cannot lift my shield. I will do as you said in Ephesians 6. I will, when you've done all you can, stand there for. I will stand at the edge and let the devils run at me and I can't lift my arms. I can't move my feet. I can't move an inch. I'm too tired from fighting. I'm too tired from standing in the battle. But I know my God will deliver me and if all I got is to stick my chin out at the devil, I'll stick my chin in defiance against the enemy of my soul that my God will meet my need. Hallelujah. That's the God I serve. That's the God you serve. Each one of us. God does not fear failure. God does not fear setbacks. He knows his plans to perform. If God's will for your life is your highest purpose, then it will be accomplished. And I'll tell you, your life will be better than you've ever imagined. Because God knows what you need. God knows better what you need than you do. Oh, but God, I need this. And I could serve you so much better with this. And and, and Lord, if you just send me my 1979 black Trans Am with the gold bird on it and T-tops and glass packs and, you know, eight miles to the gallon. <laughs> Why, Lord, I could serve you so much better with it. If God actually thought that, I'd already had it by now. But we got to trust God. We know God leads us and he won't let us blow up what he has in line for our life. God's not going to do that. God's going to make sure that you're at the right place at the right time. If God says, I will have a hammer drop out of the air at noon today, friend, you ought to be standing just like this 
or somebody would have already got hit in the head 15 minutes ago because it's 15 past noon. Can I tell you, God will take care of you every time. And if God can step out in faith to trust you, can't you do it for him? If he's willing to trust you, if he's willing to put that word in your hands and use you to touch other people's lives, don't you think he could do it too? If he can do it through you, shouldn't you be able to trust him? If God's will for your life is your highest purpose, then it will be accomplished. And your life is going to be better for it. If all you want to do is please God, where do we get in trouble? When God's will and my will go two different ways. As long as my will and God's will are on the same path, you know what? Me and God can track this thing. We can track this Christ life because, hey, this is easy to do. But what if, what if I'm going to take a left turn towards Albuquerque and God says, no, I want you to go this way. And then we get in trouble because now it's no longer your kingdom come and your will be done. Can I tell you, I'm, and I, I'm not, your life's going to be better for being obedient. It's not going to be pain-free. God never promised you a pain-free life. Do you know where God's will sometimes leads? It leads to a lion's den. Sometimes God's will leads you to face a giant all by yourself. Sometimes the will of God leads to an old rugged cross. Somebody hearing me? Jesus was in the very center of God's plan by dying for you and me. Can I tell you, if that was God's plan for us, that's the best plan we could ever have. Because even in the moment of our death, even in the moment where he had to lay everything else aside and give our very life for God, God will still be right there. I love the last words. Brother Johnny Krause over here, his last words. Now, I try to get that fella in church and, oh, well, preacher one of these days, preacher one of these days. I didn't know what his life was like. I, I didn't know. But his son and his pastor had been talking to him. Right before he passed away, him and God had a what he calls a heart-to-heart -heart session. And he woke up last Sunday morning and said, I'm done. I'm done. Okay, Daddy. Well, that's good. Son Bill said, what do you say to him? All right, Dad, you're done. About 11 o'clock, Last week, 11.15, said everybody else was gathered around in the room. He wasn't looking at anybody in the room. He looked up at somebody else and said, let's go. And died at that very moment. Even in the moment of our transition of death from this life to the next life, God, is right there. So if you already know he's going to be there when you die, don't you know he's going to be there when you live? You got to trust him. You got to trust him. God's going to take care of your finances if you'll take care of your finances. If you're doing what's right, he's going to take care of your health. He's going to take care of your marriage. If you're doing what's right, let God sweat the rest of it. Adam having a crisis in his own home but Lord this woman you gave me <laughs> Eve was not Adam's problem she's God's problem Adam was God's problem not Eve's your life's not going to be pain free but I'm telling you it's going to be rewarding it's going to be fulfilling and isn't it time that you put fear and doubts behind you so that God can find you faithful? God can look at your life, find you faithful, that disobedience is not worth God passing you by for someone else. Second Corinthians 5 says, Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God who has also given us the Spirit as a guarantee. For we walk by faith, 
not by sight. He who has prepared us for what? This very thing. This very life. These very intersections that you come into. These very struggles you deal with. He who has prepared us for this moment of my life is going to take care of me. Because I walk by faith, not by sight. Because the things I don't see are more real than the things I do. I want you to bow your heads with me. I first of all want to find out, are you, do you know the Lord is your Savior? Because I tell you, all the promises mean nothing if you're not His. God's not mean. God's not stingy. But the blessings of life always follow faithfulness and obedience. If we're not faithful and obedient, the blessings won't flow. So I want to ask today, are you here? Do you know Jesus Christ is your Savior? How do you know that you don't have things right? You got your heart hammering like a jackhammer inside your chest. I know that feeling. God wants you. God loves you. There's nothing you can do to make God love you less. You can't. He just loves you. Are you here today and you say, Pastor Mike, I'm ready to. I'm ready to make my things right with God. I don't want to live like this anymore. I want to be a new person. If you're here with every head bowed, every eye closed, I want to pray with you. Can you just slip up a hand where you're at? I want, to, I want to pray with you this morning. Thank you. Is there somebody else? I want to give my life to the Lord today. I'm tired of playing games. I'm tired of not doing what's right. Are you here? For the one that raised his hand, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Friend, if you didn't pray this prayer, if you didn't raise your hand, it wouldn't hurt to pray it anyway. Say it with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. I don't want to play anymore. I want to be yours. Come into my heart and save me. Change me. Make me a new person. I give you my life from this day on. Help me to live for you. I love you, Lord. And I want to serve you. Give me the strength to do it every day. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer and you believe it, then you're a new person. That's what the Word of God says. There are those here. Your life's right with God, but you struggle with doubt. You struggle with the lack of faith. You know who you are. This message was for you today. Lord Jesus, I pray right now for everyone that's in this building. God, I pray for peace. I pray for the peace that passes all understanding to guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. You said in your word, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. That means our mind isn't chasing other rabbit trails. It's not caught up in the fears and doubts. It's not thinking about stuff that's not going to happen. Help our minds to be in what you're doing. Help us to be believing, Lord God. Help us to be at peace because I'm not trying to fight a battle in my own mind. I'm laying it down so you can do it. God, save us from the corrupt valley of depression and ulcers and frustration because we're too busy fighting battles in our own mind when we need to be giving it to you so you can fight the battle in the spirit so we can see the result in the flesh. God, I love you. 
Lord, I thank you for this good day. Lord, I love you and I thank you that you've got each one of us in the palm of your hand. I thank you, God, because you, you're here and you know us. You call us by name. God, I just thank you. Watch over us. And Lord, I pray right now that you go before us and give us a a great day, a great afternoon. Keep us safe. Bring us back tonight, Lord God, at 5 o'clock. So when we come back together, we all all just get lost in your presence again. I love you, Lord, because (laughs) it's exciting. I never know what's going to happen when God's people get together in one mind and one accord. Something always happens. Lord, I just thank you. In Jesus' name. Somebody said amen. Do you believe he's going to take care of you? Leave here today confident, knowing God will take care of you. Stand with me if you would. Be with us tonight, 5 o'clock. Set your DVRs for the football game so you can go home and watch it. Y'all come have church. Go home, root for your team. If you miss church because of the football game, sand fleas are going to infest your house. <laughs> Just felt holy saying that. Praise God. Turn to somebody next to you and say, hey, let me go bring your car up here so you don't have to walk in the rain. God bless you. We love you. Have a great afternoon. We'll see y'all again tonight, 5 o'clock. God bless you.